Okay, where was I? Um, all oh right, okay, so I've got a suspect ish. I'm still not sure she was involved. In fact, I actively don't think she was because the bullet she had in the place was not a muzzle loader. Um, or sorry, was not a breech loader. Okay, I did get her to uh, sign the documents. I don't want to tell her about that. She already signed that. I don't... What am I... Okay. Got the two signatures. Got to get the envelope in there. Got to find the murder weapon and explore the secret passages. Uh, finding Ruby. Maybe these drunkards know something. Did I already do this? I don't think I did. I did already do this. So full disclosure, I have played this a little ahead. Um, it wasn't my cat resetting the video this time, it was me being an idiot and just forgetting... I uh, just forgot to record things. So I loaded it back up and I'm uh, doing it from then, for now. <laughs> uh, what was this again? Okay. Oh, what was this? On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Yeah, new me, new look. Like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you used a small mirror and a straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, reducing the scratch inside. The surface underneath the bed feels tender. The air brushing against it, chilly. Nope, that was that was a bad call. They feel so smooth, surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. Was it the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little young, maybe. You almost look like a professional. Your face, such as it is, a regular human face, sans expression. Okay. If anybody's wondering what that cat meowing in the background is, that is what happens when Nephi catches one of our felt mouses. She's very proud to show it off. Yeah, it's almost midnight. Sleepy time. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on verite. Spinning in eternity. On and on it goes for untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep. Studded with stars. Behold. There are millions of them down there. 
the first time, the last time, the smoke in her mouth, the plotted flowers, the faces turning, changing. What is it? It's the world, Harry boy, and you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. Good. You can never forget this shit. The rain, the snow. I don't want to forget it. It's beautiful. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop. Whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister, a ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsake. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. Yeah, I am an agent of the world. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what? Brother man. For the working class. For the greater good. Solving your little crossword puzzle. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. You know what? It is for the working class. Building communism for all, one brick at a time. There he goes again. He's a real political animal, our Harry. He still doesn't see that it's the world changing around him. It could be both. I could be changing the world and having the world change around me. And having the world change me. He's got no idea what he's in for. Why? I mean, of course I don't, but why? Beep, beep, beep! The alarm is ringing, Harry! The disco circus goes on and on! You barely slept three hours last night! You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time. Hell oh man, I'm shaving now. Rise and shine, comrade. It's time to get to work. So what now? Okay. That needs some mutton chops, but honestly, that doesn't look half bad. What's going on? Despite all the thinking you've been doing, only 0.0001% of communism has been built. It's too great a task to undertake alone. You're going to have to get organized. Have you seen my shit recently? I've really gotten it together. It's good that your personal business is in order, but... We're talking about political matters of world historical import here. You must seek out your revolutionary brothers and sisters. Find out how much communism they've built. Then, together, maybe you'll be able to build as much as 0.0002% of communism. You know what? I'm cool with that. I know you're mocking me, game. But 0.0002% of communism, that's quite a lot for one person. But it won't be easy. Decades of persecution by coalition authorities 
have driven the remaining communists of Martinez underground. I don't know, I think a couple of them are pretty obvious about it. They live underground. These communists aren't men. They're mole people. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm part of the coalition authorities. Have I been persecuting communists this whole time? Possibly. If you have been, it's only because you're a double agent acting in furtherance of your long-term objectives. Listen to this. Do you really think you're the kind of person an underground communist cell? would entrust with a mission that requires such discretion? Yeah, no, not at all. Probably not. Regardless, what's past is past. You need to look forward to the work of building communism for all. I'm not sure if I want to go searching for mole people. They're not mole people. They're your comrades in the eternal class struggle. It's your task to find and join them. But how to do that if they're hiding? Let your nose guide you, detective. You must mean my nose, as in my huge and highly functioning brain. No, we meant your nose, as in that swollen muck detector in the center of your face. It just happens to be perfectly calibrated for sensing communists. We really have no idea what they're talking about. There's no linkage between ideology an olfaction. So what does communism smell like? Failure. Okay, but what does failure smell like? It's a smell you know all too well. Simultaneously repulsive and yet darkly appealing. Musty with a sharp tang, but also a remnant of lost sweetness. Like a rotting mango that's been swaddled in a coat from your grandfather's attic so specific what you're smelling is your own body odor of course nothing a shower and change of clothes couldn't <laughs> fix i like how my perceptions getting in on this conversation people sometimes complain there are no real communists left in martinez but you can smell their presence they're out there waiting for you to join them no at least one incidentally during the waning days of the anti-centennial revolution, a number of Revisholian communards constructed elaborate hideouts in abandoned root cellars, hollowed out tree trunks and even residential sewage tanks. This latter phenomenon gave rise to the early anti-communist slogan, the future's bright when you flush out the white. All right, let's get organized. First, you'll have to locate the remaining communists in Martinez. When you get near to someone with revolutionary potential, your nose will give you the signal to establish contact. Again, no, it won't. Any olfactory response you perceive will be strictly psychosomatic. You could also just look for more tangible evidence of communist activity. Images of Krasmazov and white antlers are usually a dead giveaway. And what do I do once I establish, uh, contact? You'll discuss the monumental world historical task that lies before you. You'll engage in rigorous and spirited debates about Mazovian theory and practice. But mostly, you'll probably complain about other communists. That last part seems a little counterproductive. Not at all. Complaining about other communists is one of the most important parts of being a communist. All right, let's do this. Here we go. Wake, brave worker. Tis no time for bed. Fight till there's no slaves below and no masters overhead. Let's do this. Sup? Let's, uh, let's get ourselves organized. I want to travel here. Right. Mailbox! The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like 
a couple of letters, for good or ill. The deed is done. Let's go back to Evrat. This better be worth it after what we did. All right. I mean, I feel like the youth center is worth it. Also, who's uh, who's checking out your car here? So that's one brutal motor carriage. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it neon style. Huh. A snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops' heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. <clears throat> <laughs> While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... Oh man, they are super hardcore. Skulls. Now there's a strong organizational title. And, uh, who are you? I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches. Or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and bitches. On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. What's with the jackets? What about them? Why fuck the world? Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one. For so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship. The thrill of the chase. The hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching. I don't know, sounds like a personal problem. I'm wondering if the poetics come with the jacket, or are they derived from something else entirely? To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times. And even then, it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... That is a terrible metaphor. You get more fish in a shorter time. And, for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the void. Don't stick your dick into the void. Hate to admit it, but in a weird way, he's got a point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who are the skulls? You don't know? What kind of cop are you? Pretty sorry, one. It's not a question. Don't get into it. No, I really don't. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertnay. Besmertai, or the Besmerti, the Immortals, are West River Sholian crime syndicates. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases. Yeah, you guys don't really look like psychos. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger, infamous for their non-verbal modus operandi. Gonna say nothing. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Janrock, or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom-lighted vehicles. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. What about Cindy the skull? Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah, a true artist of the future, just like Arno Van Eyck. Hey, I know that guy now. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. I will not. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. 
Pardon. There isn't a hint of hate in them. It's like they're pissed and fuck the world out of some kind of moral obligation. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. I see you kids are into anodic dance music. Oh man, yeah! We're not fucking kids, man! <laughs> Be wary of the abyss. Why? It's a threat. An impotent threat of violence. A threat? <laughs> Good, I like those. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Hey, uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay light, man. Yeah. Didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? Why are there more skulls than Martinez? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Apart from the Unions themselves, of course. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Really? You boys? <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, the keep it light, we only joking boys? Yeah, no, I think the Hardy boys are gonna... <laughs> You're gonna end up at the bottom of one of these locks. So you're really confusing. Are you skulls or not? We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. And why do you think they uh, would accept you? Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. Seems like a great reason to bring you in and book you now. But in a non-threatening and definitely legal way, Oh, really? Right on, fuck. So what's happening now? Enough of this scullery, then. Mm-hmm. Well, that's been something. Time to go get my gun! Hey, you're probably a communist. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? Well, my nose ain't telling me nothing. Probably all this rain. Do, 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 do. Oh god, thank god you're not a communist. There. Do you smell that? <laughs> oh my goodness, it is. Smell what? Can you not detect that inimitable whiff of dissatisfaction and restlessness? That sense that the world is in need of dramatic, even violent reordering? Close my eyes and take a deep breath. Can you smell it now? No, actually. In fact, you can't smell much of anything. Perhaps your allergies are acting up. Nonsense. The reek of communism is unmistakable. And it's coming from that railing over there. You mean manana? Yes. Now's your chance to establish contact. But be easy about it. Communists have been known to charge when startled. I mean, of course Maniata's a communist. I'm pretty sure he made a uh, contact with me first. Actually, what do I have to increase perception? Since apparently that's uh, a thing. Okay, I'm gonna throw those boots on after I'm done. Yeah, after I'm done talking. Wiretapping, telescopic batons, futuristic circuit bending to infiltrate harbor machinery. Maybe you could even knock that cobalt and crane over using some remote controls. Wow. Uh, that has nothing to do what was with what was written on screen. <laughs> it's attempts to listen, money. Uh, there's something important I need to talk to you about. What's that, boy? Yeah. Now's your chance. Remember. Communists are notoriously skittish, so it's best to insinuate your way in. <laughs> Investigating a particular smell, one. Uh... <laughs> oh man, 
I'm investigating a peculiar smell, one with revolutionary implications. Could be coming from one of the jam lorries. Cargo's been sitting out for a while. I'm looking for people who really know how to grind a sausage, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Have you tried a butcher shop? Okay, maybe it's time to abandon the subtle approach. It involves our mutual friend, Cross. Don't think I've ever met a Cross personally. Then again, I've never been to Grand. Okay, maybe it's time to abandon the subtle approach. I'm looking for communists. Comunistas, huh? Can't say that's where I thought you were heading with this. <laughs> Not that I'm criticizing. It's good for a man to take his time and think about the whole socio-political world picture. It's certainly been an interesting development to witness. <laughs> so you've given up coping and now you're hunting comunistas. Care to say why? Uh, I'm sort of on a quest to develop my political potential and I need their help. No. Yeah. A fellow plains roamer in search of greater understanding. A classic story. I wish I could help. Unfortunately, I don't know many communistas. I thought the Union was all communists. Some are, some aren't. It's a big institution, room for all kinds. Comunistas, semi supremacists, even an anti institutional boyadero. There is warmth in his voice when he talks about the Union. Whatever his personal politics, this is his home. All right, so if he isn't personally a communist, he's definitely hanging out with them. I think he's personally a communist. Ah, but you know, I did meet a genuine ideologo a few months ago. Perhaps he is your guy. How'd you meet him? It was late one night as I was leaving the armor. He was waiting on the corner in a bright white jacket. Classic Saramiritsian style. He asked me for a light. We shared cigarettes. Then he asked me if I ever thought about getting into some of the extra physical branches of communism. What does that mean? No idea. I took it to mean he was asking me to join some sort of underground cell. Yes. A very old school organizing technique. The sort of thing communistas used to do before the revolution. What'd you tell them? The same thing I always tell people who try to press some claim on me. I said, every boyadero rides alone. That is not at all true, but okay. Uh, how do I find this guy? I couldn't tell you. Once I declined his offer, we finished our cigarettes and he disappeared back into the night. Just before he melted into the shadows, he turned to me and said, Remember Dobrava and Abba Danais. And then he was gone. Who? I don't know. Guess not everyone remembers. What do you think it means? Been wondering about that myself. Some communista inside talk could be. Not meant for the wider public. They love that kind of thing. You'd have to ask someone who knows the ideologo personally. I have to say, though, it sounds like you found yourselves a proper hunt. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. By the way, that weasel I visited, he had a hell of a colonial mug collection. Yeah, the janitor who gave me the key to his apartment said the guy's a bit of an asshole. Yeah, his, uh... Mug collection certainly represented antiquated social values. Like I said before, I don't know much about this weasel, but the bossman said he's a real piece of work. Thanks for helping out, friend. All right, good talk. Time to go get my gun. Really wish there were more fast travel locations. Now we're on the right track. 
It smells like. It does not smell like communism. An office. Something <laughs> officious. Is that a word? There's a bit of dust in the air that may be triggering your allergies. The lieutenant gives you a sharp, sideways look. Meanwhile, Everard Clare clatters away on his typewriter, willfully indifferent to your presence. He is not at all. Um. <laughs> okay. Empathy, got plus one, authority, minus four, perception. That's screwing that up. Extra logic. It's a... Uh, <laughs> okay. Is anything else uh, helping me with my perception? Yeah, the sunglasses are. Okay. So. <laughs> what have we got? Visual calculus, low drama. Yeah, that seems about right. Um. Let's uh, keep the interface, well, nah, I'm not going to need the interfacing. What do I need uh, that I won't be able to be prepared for, is the question. Shivers and physical instrument, that's good. Uh, visual calculus, and spirit of, uh, spirit of corpse, yeah. Drama, not sure I'm into the drama. Eh, more so than pain threshold. Well, yeah. Red. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Gotta get myself organized. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. It is done. I mailed the signatures. The Golden Boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a real future, Harry. And I feel I can finally trust you now. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, nothing is off the table. Hear that? You did it the honest way. You got the real signatures, and now he's happy. Well done. I don't know. Your dirty forgery fingers aren't sure if playing this one straight was the right thing to do. Signatures I got. I know you're planning to force out them out with construction noise. Harry, by now you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access makes some people consider moving, well, let's just say there'll be freshly renovated buildings near the roundabout where those poor people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in quality of life. I'm talking real affordable workers' palaces. He proudly spreads his hands to demonstrate the size of the palaces. They're very large. So the village is doomed. Yeah, it was already dead. You were there. You saw the place. A wasteland. There's nothing left. But mark my words, officers. We are going to reset it. Reset. I have big plans for Martinez. And they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on the coast. That land will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. What you mean? Harry. Imagine a youth center supermarket church complex employing hundreds, no, thousands of people. The coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turned into low-income housing. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago, for God's sake. It's time to move on. You know what? Even part of that's true. Why not? I accept your salute, Harry. All of it is true. I've got the center, I've got room for a retail complex, and in four years I'll get the church too. The wheels are turning, Harry. The wheels of progress. This post-war limbo, 
I won't stand for it. There are kids practically playing with their own feces out there. It cannot go on. There is true indignation in his voice when he speaks about the state of things, and even a touch of pain. And then there will be a giant statue of him towering above it all. You know what? I'm cool with him having a statue of himself. If he wants to do this out of his pride, I don't care why he does it. I just care that he does it. Sounds like you got this. You can rely on my vote. Oh, I do, Harry. I really do. I'm going to make the working man richer than Joyce Messier with that vote of yours. That's my job. Just like yours is to keep the peace. Can we get my gun now? Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. Okay, where is it? An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry, word on the street is she's a character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy, the one he described as terrifying. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track, Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway. Union Boy's gonna help you fix it. He winks at you. Don't worry, Harry. The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Waving it around at people? As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. It sounds like a very disturbed and desperate individual. Who is she? Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. Didn't the pawn shop owner say something about her uh, muttering about shooting pigs with that? There it is again. The pigs. Like Roy said, not good at all. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. It actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. All right, can you set up a meeting? I already have. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, Near the old fish market on the coast. The one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. She will be there from 2200 hours till 0200 hours. More fun stuff. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. All right, that's it for now. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. Well, since your door is open, uh, look for a cell of underground communists. Any ideas? Mr. Dubois, really? Do I look like a man who has time for underground communists? I'm as above ground as it gets. That's fair. You know any above ground communists? That's a non sequitur, if you've ever heard one. Let's drop the funny stuff. I'm trying to make contact with my revolutionary brethren. Sure thing, Harry. We're all business now. The answer is still no. I'm a busy man, as you can see. I don't block off time on my schedule for underground types. You've already spoken with Manana, as I understand. I'm afraid I don't have anything else for you on this subject. You sound weirdly defensive about that. That's all you're going to get out of him, it appears. Now, was there anything else you wish to discuss today? Ah, uh, no, I'm good. How many uh, skill points have we got? Two. I don't want to hit up that perception. Perception's not bad right now. Oh, uh, is there any other, are there any other things that I want to reset? Uh, nope, nope. I do want to reset that one, but I've already maxed out high end eye co uh, coordination. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. These four, all right, empathy, visual calculus, composure, this one's instrument. Visual calculus, physical instrument. You know what? Yeah, let's uh. I have a free thought cabinet, right? No, I don't. Do I have anything I want? No, I don't. So, yeah, let's uh. Get some visual calculus going on. I feel like that might be useful. All right. Can I just fast travel? Nope, not here. How do I get to that island? she is, but... Good. Is there anything in here I wanted? The file cabinet stands steady as ever, and the unlocked drawer slides out to greet you. Well, let's go through the folders. You're trying hard, but the data here is unbelievably oh, dry. Something about containers. Really? The two. The drawer slides <sighs> shut smoothly. You asked to be picked up, and now you leave? Come on. Come on, sure. Er. Uh, come on and don't sit on my keyboard. Last time you did that. Reset my game. Alright. Can I fast travel now? with loose nails and rot-infested wood that creaks in the wind. A construction code violation if there ever was one. Guess I'll have to take my chances. Guess so. Just be careful out there. One false step could cost you dearly. <laughs> I mean, I've walked over it plenty already. Oh, what is with this wall? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Okay, can I can I fast travel there? Not not from here. Is that bridge broken, right? Yeah, okay. There it is again. There's a spectral scent haunting this pair, no doubt. And it smells like sea brine mostly. Because it's a pair. <laughs> Years of turmoil, of hopes and dreams, ground beneath the inexorable tides of capital. 
can kind of smell dreams being ground down by capital. Without a doubt, your politico olfactory cortex doesn't deceive you. The smell is coming from that balcony over there. You mean Cindy? Zertenamo, a precocious communist youth, a symbol of a kinder, more hopeful future. Now's your chance to establish contact with your revolutionary brothers and sisters. I'm sorry. Cindy, the uh, kinder, more hopeful future? She's a nihilist. A chance to establish contact with the future. What a beautiful, terrible thought. Okay. Let's go uh, establish contact with Cindy the Skull. What's up, Cindy? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my Miola? Hey, sister, let's talk politics a minute. And what do you know about politics? My nose told me you were also a communist. We should team up, join forces. Well, well. Sounds like quite the snout you've got there. Your olfactory department wants you to know that it accepts <laughs> no responsibility for wherever this line of interrogation leads you. Sure. I know someone who'd love to talk the ideological stuff. You're looking for Stiban. Who's Stiban? A right communist who runs a mega cool and very secret meeting. I feel like you're fucking with me. But, do they, does he happen to go around in a white jacket? He might. Will you help me find him? No. Yeah, that's fair. The lieutenant let slip a sigh that seems to suggest this turn was utterly predictable. Is it money you want? Here, I got plenty. Five dollar. Keep your money. What I want from you is better than gold. Oh? Don't look so deflated. Whatever she asks, you keep your chin up. And what do you want? A wicked grin extends across her face. A laughing scab. Death hilarious. This is gonna be Bad. This is gonna be awesome. Oink for me, piggy. Just once. Oh, this is no way to treat an ev revolutionary brother. Wrong! This is exactly how I treat my little brother. I'm not oinking for you. Be a good pig now. No oink, no good. Oh, I don't even get a choice. Oink. Well, well. Seems like we're dealing with one tough pig. I'm impressed. Yes, somehow you managed to oink with at least a modicum of dignity. The lieutenant, needless to say, is not impressed. Eh. Sounds like you're really serious about meeting Stepan. It's touching, sort of. The band's group meets only at night in an old room in these apartments here. It just so happens you're in luck. Their weekly meeting is tonight. Man, I got a lot of stuff happening to, uh, tonight. Poke your snout around sometime after 10 p.m. and you might just find them. Why do I feel like there's a catch? Oh, smart pig. Because there is. See, Stepan's a bit on the paranoid side. He's got all these mega secret passphrases to keep out infiltrators and the like. You can't join the meeting without one. <coughs> Not to interfere in your personal errand, but I wonder whether it might have something to do with that phrase Maniana mentioned overhearing. Oh. Right, good thinking, Kim. The lieutenant nods. Guess this is what happens when two pigs put their heads together. That's enough. Off with you then. Well, 
piss blank and uh, fuck the world send their best. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. Really? They seem quite polite to me. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. They seem to hold you in high esteem. They'll never be skulls, but, but their hearts are in the right place. Skulls are a bit silly. What are you trying to achieve? She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her finger to her lips and squints up at the sky, as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often, you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamra. But in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. All right, Joker. This place is a sepulcher. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. She's making a valiant effort to come off as a nihilist, but she's really just an angry little commie. No wonder she was talking about the streets flowing red. That's what happened during the revolution. So what's it like being a skull and a commie? You got me, pig shit. I don't make for a very good skull. I like animals too much. Simians and pigs. I'll take it. But I'm still gonna write some damn good graffiti -o on this wall. Yeah, no, that's cool. As long as it's good. Something artistic, something that makes it look nice. Her voice sounds different when she speaks this candidly. Older, somehow. Catch you later, Cindy. Now I kind of wish I'd put those points into conceptualization. You know what? I'm here. Let's give that wall another look. conceptualization right just an ordinary just an ordinary war right nothing all right do i have anything for conceptualization i don't believe that i do i do all right well there's one Okay. And yeah, sure. Let's level that up. Just an ordinary war. Nothing to see here. I think there was something also in the flashlight out that helped. Just an ordinary war. Nothing to see here. I should come back at like sunset? Nah, I'm already here. Because you see it, finally. This wall is sublime. Look at it. The shadows, the colors. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of Wallcraft. Color peeled from the very face of God. Oh, wall father. I must paint this wall. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. <laughs> you already have the heavy fuel oil to use as paint. It's red. And Cindy the Skull has a paintbrush. This is on. First, I know you're tired, Kim. But take another look at this wall. Draw nourishment from its beauty. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. I just need to get a paintbrush. If you must. I must. This is my process, Kim. This is how I solve murders. I am the art cop. I must art in order to cop. 
Also, there's communism in there somewhere, but that's not as important. Cindy. Cindy, 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 Cindy. I need to borrow a paintbrush. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? I need a paintbrush. What for? It's for art. It's for art, okay? Well, if it's for art... But what kind of art are we talking about? Haven't thought of anything yet, but I'm sure I will. Then you have time to find your own fucking brush. You'll see. You'll all see and tremble. Yeah, not gonna hold my breath, Piggy. You look like you'd suck. Uh, everything, really. Yeah, no, I've already got my conceptualization shirt on, and I know you're a commie. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Nope. Come to steal your paintbrush. They do say the painter always paints his own portrait. Man, that's lame. No, no, it's great. I'm gonna paint the self-portrait, but from the inside. That's pretty fucked up. Even for you, Pigo. What if I had some interpretive dance? I think everyone would rather you didn't. Okay, I won't do it, but give me a, give me a brush. You're a real sad sack. You know that? Go ahead then. Art it up. Just try not to hurt yourself. I'm no self-portraits. Thanks, Cindy. Sure. Anytime. Us shit artists have to help one another. Besides, I was out of fuel oil anyway. She only gave it to you because she doesn't see you as competition. The right idea is not coming to her. It's excruciating. You know what you've got in that fuel canister you scavenge from your Kanema? Red dyed heavy fuel oil. Paint and the brush. You're ready to do this. Catch you later, Cindy. I'm gonna go art. <laughs> so ridiculous. But I am the art cop. Brush in your hand is like a loaded revolver. What will it be, Desperado? Quite a few things come to mind. <laughs> no parking. That seems fun. Let's go six. Something beautiful is going to happen. I have decided that Harrier... <laughs> yeah. You've spoken. The wall will now silently repeat the message for a decade or so until the sea air degrades the paint, adding another layer of detritus to the city. Very poetic. Real poetry. Should we return to our murder investigation? I hear there's a really bad one we are supposed to solve. You know what? Sure. Oh, I don't... Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Nah. I was gonna return the paintbrush, but uh, so I don't have that either. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna swap that back for. Yeah, I like this one. Let's go. I have decided that after hitting rock bottom, Harrier's just gonna be stubbornly optimistic. Not that way. Gotta find my way to the island. Hey, are you a communist? Nope. Okay. Am I close enough to fast travel? Yes. Island's up here. Could do that, but that 
Those bullet holes ain't going anywhere. This is the boardwalk, right? I'm supposed to look for a sniper's nest on the boardwalk. This is a hmm. well, I'm here. It's looking randomly for Rudy. Some bullet holes. Oh. Nope, nobody's used this for a while. The scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Yeah, somebody, uh, this was an execution. A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. There are many of them, a dozen at least. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet, no sound, no movement. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles prime. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. The morning sun rises beyond the horizon, radiating the first light of the day. The order was carried out at dawn. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. What is this? The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting, a common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people, familiar, each and every one of them. But who were they? Comrades, the forsaken, the wretched, who tried to rise against the horrors of the world. And the person to the side? The Commandant, the one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air, the lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Hey Kim, you know anything about this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Remember what Trent Heidelstam said about Feld? What if it was a Feld personnel when their assets were seized by the revolutionaries? Another likely scenario. Or maybe... Or the people from the co coalition? The moralists? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant. The superior giving the orders. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. All right. Yeah, sure, I'll take a quick five experience points. Just need another 39. Round it, call it 40. Sub 
you too. Nope, nowhere to go on this side. Gotta get to that island. It's new territory, unexplored. Last time. I'm here. The day's still young. Let's uh and talk to the spookers. Okay, yeah. You're still here, which means that this all happened last session, uh, when I forgot to record things. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's talk to you. Oh, hey, Wayne. There's coffee in the back. Oh, wait. I meant the mother's love. Any chance you uh, heard the Vieta say the password to her computer? Too many times, essay. You need it for something. Yeah, I just want to break into our computer, see what's on it. Don't sweat it, Vato. The password is afterlife death. What you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nidita Pequeña when I hear it. What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. Are these yours? I'll show them the clothes that I'm probably wearing. I think they were a long time ago. I had to shed them like skins. To get closer to the center of the silent. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. Thanks, mate. They only stop him from climbing. They look pretty dapper, actually. What happens when you drink from this perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that. Smother of silence, you mean, uh, the innocents? No, no, no. There's a new god in town. And she can be painted or sculpted. Because she has no limb or even a face. She is the end. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me. But I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. How did you find this place? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here, back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. Eh? It didn't belong to me. Still don't understand what you're doing here. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. Can you sing for me? I am from No Marietti, if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is Silent as the Mother. Marietti is a mesque style of music and dance, commonly seen at all manner of festivities, especially weddings. It's delightfully quaint owing to its peasant origins. He lost his cool there for a moment. Seems you hit some nerve. Sorry, mate. 
Right, I had other questions. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Okay, thanks. I think we're done here, Essay. Okay. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure whether we'll find our suspect here. I doubt that. But, let's go mess with uh, this computer. The machine's keyboard is the speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good morning, Sotres, Accident, and San Bruno. This is the East Insulin Dian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Hey, Yvonne, what's up? Good, thank you. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Um, okay, let's try this again. I think I have the right password. Good. Please repeat the password. After life death. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Thanks, but I'm finished. Goodbye, Fortress accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Hit print. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. Another filament memory. Press play to talk with the repeater. The first entry made on the 4th of February. 51 by an unknown author is short and concise arrived at the church the door was boarded up so i used the crowbar to get inside looks like the place has been deserted nothing out of the ordinary but i'll ask around need to figure out how to get the electricity in the lieutenant leans closer scouring the printout over your shoulder just as you finish reading he looks up muttering under his breath. Fourth of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Sixth of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. Seventh of February, 51. Finally, got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series, something advanced. Why does she need an antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? 8th of February, 51. Bought the antenna, had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers, but at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup. When the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. These are those game designers, right? I think these people worked in the radio computer games business. The one we saw in the Doom commercial area. They must be our former co-workers. Data loss. Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed. 
and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. 12th of February, 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Linta for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment, but I did discover a curious audio-spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. Is she talking about? 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? What could it be? The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music one neo-disco song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. That disco man must be a cell. March 51. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office in Martinez. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her. Hey, that's me. I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with the machine. I disagree. No, no. It was a great idea. You're learning things. This is how you learn things about machines. March 51. A new two-meter aux cable, noodles, crackers, ping-ping energy drinks, water, toothpaste, gum, also some canned air. Your reading is interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Hey, I was just reading your diary and your shit. Sorry? Breaking into my radio computer, I see. Very observant of you. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. We're looking for a suspect in a murder investigation. We thought they might be hiding here. No one's hiding here. It's just me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her, after she has rebooted the machine. That is a good idea. Do, 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 do. That's two seconds, right? What is it? I didn't break anything, did I? No, you just printed out my personal log and wasted some paper. Okay. Hey, were you the uh, lead programmer of World Untethered? Yes. Or, no. Not anymore. That project is dead. I'm sorry for your loss. She doesn't seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. Who are you and what are you doing here? I am Sona Lufkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience 
and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. Seems like a weird way to answer that question, but okay. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. You seen a woman named Ruby? What? No, no one's suspicious around here. She has not seen her, sire. It is true. What about the man in the rafters? No. Nope. But you know he's around. Yes. Sounds like you're not worried about him. No, you're right. I'm not. What are you doing here? You really like those questions, don't you? Yep. The bloodshot. She really hasn't been getting much sleep lately, has she? I'm a police officer. It's my job to ask questions. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. Not planning on it. I'm just a curious person. What research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. So what now? Wait, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. What does that mean? Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? That's a little above your pay grade at the moment. Wait, does that mean that we're living in a world with holes in it? I don't know. Are we? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. But how do I figure it out? I don't even understand how we're talking about something that doesn't exist, let alone measure it. You measure it by its surroundings. By that which does exist. Which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. Huh. Hydro transducers. So that's what those water basins are. Devices for recording sound through water. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Cool, cool, cool. Um, you know why not? Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. Well, that's all I wanted to know about the scary two millimeter hole in the world. Great. Thanks. How do you feel about a nodic dance music? What? I hate it. Fair? I bet she hasn't even heard it. Okay, wow, that was quick. Uh, why do you hate it? Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it. But to a sober mind, it just sounds like uninspired rock with it. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Okay, cool. How do you feel about a club for a nodic dance music? This is about those beat freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. Uh, you think they want to build a drug den? Take a guess, why don't you? I mean, I'm still convinced they want to establish a nightclub for Nodic dance music. They said it's their dream. I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Good luck. I'm not coming in there. All right. We'll leave you in peace. I mean, they were all trying to butter me off a lot. Yeah, but I gotta get to that island. It's 9.41. The actual workday has started. How do I get to the island? That is up here. I can see it on my map. Joyce has gotten there with her boat. 
And I don't have a boat. I was hoping to use her boat like a taxi. Only not pay the fare. How do I... How do I get out there? Oh, what's this? Is there something here that would indicate a sniper used this place as a nest for taking the shot? Just some urban detritus, a bottle, and a dilapidated old comms tower. I don't see it, Lieutenant W. Freitor. I don't see a person take a shot here and hit something there, in the whirling in Iraq. Let's take a look over the water. There, 1.2 kilometers over the cold water of the bay, through a thick snowstorm melting flake by flake in the waves, you see the smallest rectangle, barely visible. A glowing light on the third floor of the whirling in rags. With binoculars, you would see a young woman's shape move behind the glass, her limbs long and slender. Maybe the assailant climbed the comms tower? It's not possible to climb that ladder. And even if it were, why? There's no platform up there to aim from. It does look extremely rickety and wouldn't help much either. Campfire, maybe? To warm his hands before pulling the trigger? Perhaps. But anyone could have made this. The coast is specked with fire this time of year. Truthfully, this seems like a very poor choice to take a 1.2 kilometer rifle shot from. Visibility is awful. There's water vapor everywhere. I think we can rule out Beatable Prime, was it? I think you're right. Uh, how do I get to the island? How? Water taxi or something? Why is Joyce Messner just waiting for me there? I don't have a boat. Oh, but wait. I might have a boat. Fishing village. Which I cannot fast travel to from here. Hasn't been opened in a long while. Use you this see structure to take a shot? Hand. From here to the whirling? I can't see how. The church is in the way. Alright. That was a very good point. I'm going to proposition this woman. Let's see. Suggestion. That's what I wanted, right? I think so. Suggestion, yes. Do I have any other suggestions? I don't think I do. Is probably going to help more. You know what? Some drama. Why not? The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Why does she care about the waves so much? What's going on? What is with you and the waves? What is it with waves and fishermen? <laughs> we need to be out there with them. Fishing, making a living. So I asked them to accommodate me. But until that happens, I can try to assist you the best I can. So, what will it be, officer? Ah. No, I'll wait till after, uh, <laughs> after Kim leaves. 
Looking for someone. Maybe you can help. Let's see. Who are you looking for? Looking for a suspect who might have stayed in the neighbourhood. Okay. When did this person stay here? Past few days. Arrived on Friday. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. The weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. Oh. Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. Not looking for anyone else right now. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? So is that your skiff? Sure is. The sun, I call her. Coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. It's a little snowy, ain't it? Aye. Sunny days. You got a problem with that? <laughs> no, ma'am. We have no quarrel with sunny days. Good. It would have been bad news had it turned out it wasn't a sunny day. Bad news for the skiff. Bad news for the nets. Bad news for the kids. There's a moment's silence. She looks at the slushy snow melt on the yellow belly of the boat. When do you think it'll be ready? There's something we might have to check out on one of the islands. The origin of the shot. Shot, huh? The boat will be ready when the sea turns and the winds settle. You can't command the weather, officer. Fair point. My prediction. It will be at least two days. Be seeing ya. Hey, Joyce, you wouldn't happen to be a communist, I'll just you? keep the cordelechi in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to a pier any day. Jet, jet, jetty. <laughs> oh, she's so awkward. Something about the way she says it makes you want to sing. Jetty, jetty. Oh, jetty, oh, jetty. <laughs> it's good to see you here, detectives. I only just arrived myself. We got your note. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. So how do you like it here? Hmm. How do I like it? Water drips down eaves of Etonite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. It's pornographically poor. The street has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? Maybe. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame. The RCM is on the scene. One of us even has a gun. All right. Politics time. Let's react. Uh, let's see. You're right to be scared. This is your fault. You're in no danger. The working class have no idea what's happening to them. Try not to be scared. This is just how the real city looks. This place is doomed either way. Yeah, try not to be scared. This is just how the real city looks. Oh, I'm not frightened, officer. I'd never... Have I told you how they discovered this place? The fishing village? No, the Insul Indian Isola. Nope. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. Fifty years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. Saying nothing. I knew oh, you whoops. would sympathize. 
Most Revisholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For right. now, how can I assist you in this new location? Well, tell me now. You have time. Do we? I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. I would not want to delay you. This story she will tell only before she leaves Martinez, at the very end of her stay. Okay. Maybe there is something else I can assist you with while you're hot in pursuit. Found the badge, by the way. I love you did. Fast, observantly, like an electronic printer. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Y. Freighter? Ah, oh, that's it. Oh, okay, so gotta gotta find Rudy. Rudy. Hmm. You kids wouldn't happen to know where uh... the scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. You must be Lanel's twins. This one doesn't say anything, kicking the concrete with his worn-out sneaker. Lily's our mom. I already said that. The stone kicker laughs suddenly. His head is too large for his shoulders. The other one laughs as well. Wow, so intellectually stimulating. You guys look identical. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. He looks just like me. Yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. The rock kicker was just being shy, but now he's enthusiastic again. You're bad with kids. Yes, I am. Don't worry, everyone is. How about we do some police work now? We're not getting anything here. Hey kids, have you seen any bad people around? What bad people? I don't think questioning four-year-olds without their parents present is going to crack the case. I'm just looking for a red-headed woman. The kids might have seen her. All right, bye, kids. Take care. None of you know anything. She went north. Gonna want some perspective on that. Got that visual calculus. Gonna want some more. Some more visual calculus, I think. Man, do I look dapper. But I think that is all for now. Ah, man. I got so many meetings for this night. But I'm really just no closer to finding out where Ruby might have been hiding. I think it's in one of these buildings, but I can't seem to get in those. Oh wait, what those are? I'll wait till next time. Um, well, I hope you've enjoyed watching me stumble around blindly looking for this needle in this kind of depressing haystack. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.